Regrettably, I made a big mistake in my last video. I gave credit to the wrong bass player on a track. Today, I'm gonna make up for it by talking about the actual bassist, and I'm gonna break down his most famous bass line, which you've all heard, and it's a banger. Don't go anywhere. What do Lou Rawls, the OJs, MFSB, and Curtis Mayfield all have in common? At some point, all of these artists were backed up by Instant Funk. Originally from Trenton, New Jersey, Instant Funk featured Kim Miller on guitar, Scotty Miller on drums, and Raymond Earl on the bass. As a group, they had a number one R&B and disco hit in 1978 with I Got My Mind Made Up, You Can Get It, Girl. I got my mind made up, come on, you can get it, get it, girl. But as a backing band, their footprint can be heard all over the Philadelphia International Records catalog. They played on records by Bunny Sigler. MFSB. And one of my personal favorites, Archie Bell and the Drells. But the most famous song they ever cut was a dance classic sung by a teenager who was discovered while cleaning Sigma Sound Studios with her parents. This is a great bass line. It's what they call in the business a hook. It's a two chord pattern in the key of B minor going from the one to the six. Listen hard. Every note should be played legato. Except for that A that happens in between chords. Check out how the pattern echoes itself. Both of these chords share basically the same notes. So the root, the note on the bottom, changes while everything else stays the same. This is one of the tricks of good dance music, to keep a repeating pattern and yet still having something change inside of the music. Another very subtle detail is how the beat is being anticipated every other bar. The phrase starts on the upbeat of four. That little push is making us, the listener, feel the subdivision and giving the music forward motion. Check out how differently the figure would sound if we put it right on the beat. This groove is just not the same if we change any part of it. One more thing to listen for. This song somehow survived after disco. One of the big reasons might be that it doesn't have what songwriter John Fitch called the headache drum. That disco era thumping four on the floor kick drum pattern is nowhere to be found here. And I think that helped to sustain the song in the long run. I want to give a shout out to the great Dexter Wanzell for setting me straight about the track Life on Mars. And by all means, if you haven't heard Raymond Earl play the bass yet, you better do it. In my very brief but extensive deep dive into his music, I not only heard incredible grooves, I heard a consistent sound, style, 
and voice in his bass playing. Had I checked out a handful of records before I ever heard Life on Mars, I would have known it was him right away. He's that good. So check him out.